So, this algorithm over here will be used for both chess and for Sudoku. So, what is Sudoku? Well, let's go ahead and find it. So, it's Sudoku, not Sudoku, as some of my students have been saying. So, um, it is started, I don't know when it started showing up in the newspapers, or rather when I started paying attention to when it showed up in the newspapers, but it's in the newspapers, these games. It is a logic game, according to Wikipedia. Uh, been around since 79. First appeared in the unit... U.S. newspaper and then the Times in 2004 um, because we could make a program to produce distinct pu puzzles. So this is a typical Sudoku puzzle. Um, and the goal of the game is to go from a um, you know, partially completed board to a fully completed board. Uh, you have a couple rules. First off, each of these boxes contains one of the numbers 1 through 9. Um, you can place... So... And the numbers need to pla be placed according to three rules. So let me go ahead and boot up um, Sudoku on the New York Times. So the first rule is, is that um, you can't have any numbers repeated in the same row. Right? So, I, so because there is a 1 in this row, I can't put a 1 here. Um... I can, however, put a 7 over here. Okay, that is the first rule. So no numbers in the same row. Our second rule, no numbers can be repeated in the same column. So no 9, no 8, no 7. Well, well 7 is fine over here, right? No 2, no 6, right? Um, and you'll note, though, that a lot of stuff popped up. Right, we've got a column violate. We've got a row violation and a column violation, but also our third rule is being violated. So the this is so this is what makes the Sudoku uh, interesting. Um, you notice how it's how this nine by nine board is split up into into a bunch of three by threes. Okay, uh, the three by threes are are now the rule is that each of these three by three squares over here can't have any repeats. So I can't put a 1 over here because there's already a 1 in this 3x3. Three three. I can't put a 6 here or a 8 here because there's already 1 in the 3x3. Three three. Um, I can't put a 3 I can't put a 3 over here because we already have a th 1 in this in this particular 3x3. Three three, right? So you've got three things to look out for. Um putting in a number in the same row, the same column, and the same by three by three. Uh, so, right, and it's an interesting puzzle. We can put, for instance, okay, so four can't go over there, but a three can, which means that basically, let's see. So we've got, we definitely can't put a six here, but a five looks perfectly safe to put here. And what about, oh, it looks like maybe a four, and let's see, what other numbers do we need? We need to put a 7 somewhere. We can't put a 7 here because of this, but we can put a 7 here, which leaves our last remaining number to be a 9, which we can't put there. Now, notice that we put some stuff. Let's see. Can I switch the 5 and the 9? Yes, I can. That seems to fix it. Um, and so now I've got this solved, which gets me a long way to the puzzle. So... Um, here, this auto gives me just simply the possibilities of what I could of what I could get there. Um, all right. So now um, this puzzle. Now it is actually a very interesting logic puzzle. But um, one of the guys, I think it was one of the people who founded Google. I'm not sure if it was Larry Page or some somebody wrote at Google wrote an article about how his wife or girlfriend would had done. Um, yeah, was was obsessed with, with uh, Sudoku, and he was annoyed by it because you could write a program that to easily solve that. So we're going to write a program to easily solve that, not despite anybody's uh, spouse, but because it's actually an interesting uh, problem that uses the same exact idea: backtracking uh, with chess and featuring backtracking with recursion. Right? We could solve this with brute force, right? Which is just literally throw numbers everywhere until we get something that sticks. But we'd get invalid solutions that are obviously invalid, right? And we'd still be choosing numbers over here, right? 
those are obviously invalid and we'd still be trying to fig putting down more numbers, right? So backtracking with recursion allows us to basically truncate those. So we know that if I put a one here, I'm never going to, and I already ruled that that's wrong. I'm never going to try another one there. Same with a two or a three, right? Basically with backtracking and recursion, I'm never going to try anything that basically has a one here. I'm not even ever going to try putting a five here, even though that will work because I'm not going to put a five there when I have a one there. I might try a five there with something else, but that branch, which at anywhere there's a one in the corner is cut off. So two. So the algorithm looks something like this. Uh, can't put a one there, can't put a two there, can put a three there. Um, so here, right, board is obviously my Sudoku, bo bo my Sudoku board, and position is my row column. So one, two, three. So go here, go here. So I start at zero, zero. I go to row zero, column one, and I just simply say return the solution of the next one because there's already something there. Return the solution of the next one since there's already something there. Uh, that's a base case, right? Okay, this one's blank, so I need to try all possible combinations. For each possible choice, right, that's not the hard part. That's just simply checking one through nine, right, until we get to the first one that works. Um, if it's a valid choice, that's actually the hardest part, checking, okay, valid, that means, then that should, you should probably write three functions for it to call the same row, call the same column, and call the same, and check the three by three. Um, mark the position at board with that choice. Uh, if I can solve that position, board plus one is equal to true. Okay, so go on, go on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, go on to the next one. One, two. Let's see. So none of that worked. So I went through up to this point. Okay, went through all the choices. None of them were valid. So here I'm going to clear the choices at this position. Now I didn't need to clear them afterwards because I'm overwriting it, right? I didn't need to clear between one and two because I was already overwriting it. But anyway, I go through, couldn't find any. And so here I return false. So where does that get returned to? That gets returned to here. Who was calling me? This square over here. So this square says, oh, nothing I tried after here worked. So I should probably try something else. Will eight work? No. Will nine work? No. Drat. So I'm going to return false to whoever called me, which is this square who will return false, right? It was just going to say, this one just simply says return the next square. This returns false, which returns false, which returns false to him. And it's, and this guy, and now five is like, okay, so this got me to a dead end. So what do I need to do? I need to say, uh, okay, so I just simply go on to the next possible choice. Six doesn't work. Seven doesn't work. Eight doesn't work. Nine works. Continue on. One, two, three, four, five, right? This called this, 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 called five, put a five over there, and now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. So now I got to row zero. Now I'm at uh, column nine, which doesn't exist, so I'm going to go ahead and set and I'm going to, my, my, what I like to do is say, hey, if I'm at column nine, set to column zero and increase the row by one to go on to the next square. And then I just simply continue four, which we'll call that, which we'll call that. Not the most elegant way to solve this, uh, this puzzle. And it takes a long time, um, depending on some of the puzzles, right? So this one was clear. So zip. Eight, nine, nope. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Ooh, seven, that worked. One, two, three, four. Oh, that didn't work. So eight, nine, got it. Nope, got it back up over here. Six, seven, eight, nine. And now we start again. One, right, but notice that these are completely different branches. And by branches, I mean that basically there's anything below this. Um, any of the, we don't bother entering any squares below this or trying to figure out anything there because we're already in a val invalid state. We don't move on to the next square until until we found until we found a solution that works here. Seven, right? 
solution, and so on and so forth. This will eventually lead to a solution. Right? Hint. Right here is just trying to tell me. Um, let's see. Can I throw this? Uh, reveal puzzle. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So eventually we're going to get these squares going forward, right? But notice that a lot of the squares I got that basically some of the squares I would have had to backtrack over to here, but some of these squares are correct, and we'll eventually get to the end. It takes a while uh, to run. If you're doing it by hand, your computer will do it pretty quickly. Um, this has a bunch of extra credit involved. Um, Project Euler um, Sudoku, right? This problem over here, um, which has another one, a Japanese number meaning number place. All right, so here, um, tells you another explanation of this of this and it says here's a bunch of sudoku boards right so for the regular for this program you could just hard code for full credit just hard code in a puzzle you don't need to read a file or anything you don't have to use in, user input you just got to say this is the stored puzzle this is the solution to the stored puzzle that i calculate for extra credit you're going to read 50 sudoku boards Right from a file and solve them and solve them all. Easiest way to do that: read one line, which has that grid one, throw it out, then read the next uh, lines and load that into your board. Then so read one, throw it out, read the next uh, nine, and do that until you get to the end. Um, and then what you want to do is basically to confirm that you solve it, you take all these, th you take basically this three-digit number over here, four hundred eighty-one. And add basic. So if you get 483 over here, you'll want to take 483. And if you get 201 over here, you're going to add 483 to 201 to whatever you get in the top three squares over here. So add all those numbers together, create an account. You'll be able to check your answer to verify that, and just simply uh, send me and just simply send me that so that you can get credit for that.